Welcome to ZombieChickenTaco.com, Lesson 1, Video 2. Today we're going to cover layers. To do that, we're going to go ahead and open up Radiant. With Radiant open, we're going to hit the L key, and that's going to bring up your Layers menu. Layers are uh, uh, a very, very, very crucial part, part of uh, sorting out your level. Uh, filters is the other one. We're going to touch on filters in a minute, but uh, for right now, we're not going to touch filters. We're going to concentrate on layers. Um, left click and drag a box onto your stage here, to the, to the world. You, when you create that, it's going to go into the 000 underscore global uh, layer. That layer houses all of your data and all of your geometry. You're going to right click and you're going to create a new layer. When you create a new layer, I'm going to call this learning, because that's what we're doing here today is learning. Um, it created in the global. We've got a new layer. It works a lot like Photoshop, essentially stacking things on top of each other and being able to, to to hide them. Layering came from the old cell animation days when Disney would create uh, create animations on the on plastic film and they would layer them and you can take a layer out and it completely makes it invisible. That's essentially the same concept with Photoshop, Flash, uh, pretty much any, any art pr production out there has layers. Same thing with 3D, allowing you to get a visual representation of your map and scale it to your liking. Um, and Radiant, once you've created a brush, we're going to go ahead and select it by left, uh, shift left clicking on it. And we're going to right click learning and we're going to add selected brushes. This is one of the features you can use to move your, your items around within the map. You can also hide the layers. You can hide them from rendering. So in the rendering process, when you compile your level, they'll be excluded from that compile, which is great if you have uh, any reference material in your in your map for sizing things out, or if you have some scrap stuff on there you don't really particularly want in your map. You can you can rend you can block the render out here in your layers, and that's represented with the red ring and the cross through it. When you've got multiple layers, we're going to select this one. We're going to add that select brush. We already did that, but we're going to hide that and we're going to make that invisible. We're going to create a new brush under, or I'm sorry, create a new layer under the global. We're going to call this testing 2. It does alpha, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to screw this all up. I was going to call that learning, but I'm going to call it testing. Um, in the testing folder, we're going to create a new brush. Remember, it puts it back into the global because it's highlighted green. If we Create the, right click on this and set this as the active layer we can draw a brush out. It's going to automatically put that, as you can see, active layer. Now what's really nice is if you've got a brush out in the field and you don't know what layer it is, say you have a thousand layers in here and you go, oh crap, which one is it in? You can actually right click on the brush and go to layers, select an active dialog. If you look, it shows here it's the global. When you select that, actually, it comes up here and puts you, your cursor or highlights the layer that it's in, which is re really, really quite nice. Um, multiple brushes will bring up multiple listings. Try that again. There we go. Global learning and testing. There's also another feature um, in here. We've got active layers. We've got uh, our, our viewable layers. Now we've can hide the layers and one more thing in here which is not an act actual selection when you click on it is freezing layers and to do that you still either right click the layer you want to freeze and freeze the layer and the children freeze layer or freeze layer and children or you can left click on it and hit the space bar a couple of times and that'll cycle you through the different options you have for those layers and that's a freeze layer now I can't select that and that's locked into place which is really good when you have a lot of stuff in your layer and you've got something down that is perfect. You're not going to go any further, so you're going to do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and unhide all of these. And we're going to give you another demonstration here of creating a layer. We're going to call this Learning 2. Learning 2 is in the Globals, full, uh, globals layer right now. Say I wanted to put that into the Learning layer. It's really, really simple. Um, we're going to take this Learning 2 and we're going to drop that right in the learning layer. And as you can see, the children are represented with the plus minus on the side. That's pretty much it with layers, other than right click select, right click set active layer, we've got create new layer, hide new layer, show layer, freeze, ignore, collapse, rename, and delete. Renaming a layer as simple as uh, 
right clicking on it, renaming it to whatever you want. So for instance, we will come into the testing and rename the layer. Nope, sorry, that was a delete. We're going to rename the layer and we're going to rename it learning three. With the layers, which is also interesting, is if we've got brushes that are in this layer, and say we don't want the layer anymore, but we still want the brushes. What happens if we delete the layer? Nothing. Brushes actually stay on the stage. They go to, if I'm not mistaken, the parent. And if this was in the Learning 2 folder, we'd go to the Learning. And because it was under the Globals folder, um, we're going to look in the Select dialog, and sure enough, it is in the Globals, Globals layer. I don't know why I call it folder. I'm used to Flash, I guess. Uh, backspace deletes. And that's pretty much it for layers. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the forum. Thank you.